My braid is slashing bird. No quarter. I am going to be a odd comfortable ball at all over you from start to finish. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box. And this is kicking off my series of special episodes with these builder panels. And this first topic I thought would be a great one to start with, because when you get into building, you know, where do you start? Um, everybody has to start somewhere. And I think that journey looks different for everyone. And, you know, so I thought it was important to pull a bunch of builders together who I think are at different stages in their, you know, experience with building and get some thoughts and opinions about starting in building in combat robotics. So welcome everybody to the show. Thank Hi. you. Thank you so much for having us. It's, it's, it's great to just talk, have a group of people we can just talk robot stuff with. Exactly. So very we can do this. <laughs> exactly. Um, so first I'm going to go around and just have everybody introduce themselves and I'll, you know, say your name and you can let everybody know about your background. Um, I will add that Jonathan, who was supposed to join, um, totally my fault, isn't able to make it for this recording. Um, but as you'll see later in the episode, there will be a, a little piece with him just to give his thoughts and opinions um, from his side of things. But I'll start with Tom. So Tom, tell the people about yourself. Hi, I'm Tom Farkas. Um, I'm team from Team Grumplebots. Um, I've been doing combat robotics. May was my of last year was my first event. Um, I've been to almost everyone since, um, but my first bot was first drink of the day, and now I usually fight with the the positively bots. And I had a revenge of mouse mouse thrown in there too. Yes, um, all of which are adorable and amazing. Um, Thank so, you. <laughs> and um, Alex, go ahead and you know let us know what, what you're doing over there. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm a Brit. I am. Uh, I am part. I'm team. The team captain, the engineer, the driver of Team Hall and Hall. Uh, I currently am running uh, a featherweight called Shogun, but I have dabbled in. Uh, ant weight, beetle weight, and even my and even heavy weight. I've been doing this for around about five years now. So, yeah, it's the uh, I, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's the usual thing of I love taking part, but my God, the the week before is incredibly stressful. <laughs> which I'm currently in that mode at the moment because I'm going to be taking part next week in Labman's Fight Fest, which. Will be taking, will probably be, I think, live streamed. Don't know what if it's already happened by the time that this podcast comes out, but check out if it has or not. Come and go check that out. Definitely. Um, Alicia. Awesome. Well, so I actually jumped in on the deep end. So I started on Team Horizon um, on the heavyweights, BattleBots. Woo, it was very fun. Um, I had gone while I was working on Horizon with the team. I had gone actually last May. It was my first Norwalk because I had moved out to the East Coast. Um, so started going to the Norwalks regularly. And then I told myself after BattleBots, I could focus on building myself a small robot um, and had a different idea originally. And then my brother, Peter, decided to give me one of his Peter Bar kits, which was very exciting. Um, so that is kind of how frustration was born. Um, but yeah, I guess it's been about a year and a half now, almost, almost two years, including like the very start of the heavyweight. So just getting started, I feel like yeah, I've just kind of jumped in the deep end and then I've started learning how to swim. <laughs> Yeah, that is a different way of doing it, but I mean, hey, like there's no there's no wrong way to get into combat robotics. So normally um, people go little to big, and then I just was like 250, and then let's go <laughs> the <with> three. Woo! <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, 12s look fun. <laughs> so I feel like I'm just like closing in on the middle. Absolutely. Um, and then Johan. Um Hi, I'm Johan from the Bahamas. I'm on Team Stamina. I'm like, I haven't really competed in any NHRL event, events yet, but I'm building a three pound horizontal for um, 
or September. I'll be there in September. That's awesome. Thank you. So will I. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and I am currently building a three pound beetle. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm starting. I've, I've got parts um, that, that will eventually become poison apple and I am very excited. Um, so yes, I think I think, you know, we we all have certainly had different journeys, um, but I want to get into some of the questions because I think some of the fans asked some really good questions about getting into building. And one of those questions, um, and, you know, some of you may have varying answers, but how have you learned, you know, what type of components to use and how do you balance like the the line between making sure you're doing it in an affordable way, but also getting quality parts for the robot, um, because you can do it very cheaply and then send that robot into combat and it will get blown up immediately. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of depends on your goals, I guess. But I'll just, you know, go around the table and start with Tom. What What's your answer for that? Ooh. A lot of the... Some of the best ways to well, get parts is by going through a lot of the actual builders, um, like getting parts from like Just Cause or Peter. Um, they are actual builders, so they know what is required of the parts. Plus a lot of them or all of them that I've dealt with are really good people too. So if something does happen, they're like, whoa, tell me about that failure we'll try to get it fixed and, or we'll try to get you something new to replace it. Um, but for finding out what you need, failure is just, if something breaks, just be like, okay, that's the weak point, fix it for the next time. Cause you can build it cheap and it will blow up in your first <laughs> fight. And, you know, you just have to just expect it and then just learn from failures. Like even pause, I mean, it was started being printed out of PLA and it that got blown apart too and then i slowly made the switch to um tpu and then harder tpu and then carbon fiber bottom plate but it's just put a, put one out there and it's going to get wrecked your first fight you just expect that your first event and then just learn from and you don't have to upgrade everything all at once just like one part a paycheck or something or two parts per event yeah um alex what's your experience with that over over yonder best thing i would say when it comes to when it comes to with trial and error and all that stuff is i would never it's one of the unless you absolutely have like uh, have a master's degree in engineering is it never go straight into heavyweight battle like battle bots and stuff like that like, never have your first build be a heavyweight because it because it's never gonna it's very really <laughs> well. <laughs> not as someone who was also guilty of that themselves um but it's one of those things it's like you you will look on like you know you're watching on you on, on on um on tv or being a brit legally uh uh through other channels um it will be great it's very you will look at that and you think oh i can do that and then, I don't know, you do something like you see that a robot's for sale on eBay or something and you decide to buy it and then you get it and realize, oh my God, there's a, there's a, this is a mountain of tasks that needs doing. Uh, and you realize that that might, I mean, you, you get it working for your first event, but yeah, then you realize the amount, but yeah, it, especially with the affordability part, unless you're as rich as some of the teams that do battle bots heavyweight is never the best place place to start always start off with the lower divisions wherever you can if it's in the uk you ant weights are the best place to start because they're very cheap and you can, you could build one for about 100 pounds leave less than that and it, if it gets trashed oh well that's a learning experience and then you can slowly work your way up from that into the heavier weight classes uh and most of the stuff that you can learn from the lower weight classes can absolutely be applied to the higher divisions but yeah, don't if unless you're absolutely you have absolute brilliant know-how and you can do all that sort of stuff, or you have a big team of people that can also help you out, 
don't just rush straight into heavyweights because you will it will most likely go wrong <laughs> it will. I good, go good segue to- alicia good yeah. segue <laughs> it was a great segue i felt very called out but um shout out to the rest of team horizon who yeah. <laughs> do a lot more than me um so coming in yeah it was i would definitely not recommend it as somebody's first robot um i did learn a lot it was very good but had i not had such a great team around me I, I mean, honestly, they probably could have done it without me. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm very lucky to have Peter, who, uh, like Tom said, is a great, a great help to builders. He wrote a guide on, you know, how to build a combat robot, which I read through when I was starting. Um, and yeah, has just a lot of good resources. And then um, I'm on Team Shred It too. And honestly having like those guys be able to say like okay this is good this is not good um that's really helpful as well so definitely tap into like the builders there's a ton of discords where you can get help for different robotics like questions if you're like oh does this esc work with this voltage thing like i don't have an engineering degree so i'm like i could put it on it and they could light on fire. Like, I have no idea. (laughs) So um, asking questions, asking dumb questions is always okay. Um, And people are more than willing to like jump on voice chat and like walk you through how to solder something. Or if you're like me and decided to buy cheap stuff the first time to save money and bought like a $7 soldering iron on Amazon that ate itself, like that's probably not going to be the best tip. And then you get, you know, somebody who says this is a soldering iron to buy and this is the solder you should use instead of the stuff that you randomly got from China. It does not work. (laughs) So sometimes you have to learn the bad way, but honestly, yeah, the builder community is so good at answering your questions. They'll like at the event, they'll teach you how to solder. They'll teach you how to like use whatever machinery. Um, And then you just kind of like build up your collection, which is what I've done (laughs) as I've kind of gotten more things. I'm like, okay, I need a better set. Like I actually need wrenches. So I'm going to like get some wrenches. So I keep adding on. Um, But really it's just crowdsourced, you know, figuring out what's the best thing because the builder community has tested probably almost every kind of tool or every kind of thing out there. Somebody has tested it. So you can really easily now, (laughs) thanks to all the hard work of people before us and trial and error, you can find out like what's the best thing to get for your value, what works within your budget, um, how to, you know, make things stretch farther or get things that will last better and kind of find that medium between like super expensive, super custom, like titanium parts that are like really crazy. And then like getting stuff that's like really affordable and durable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, Johan, I know you're early in your in your process, but what have you learned so far as far as those things? I'm sure all the 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 guys on Team Stamp have given you a lot of advice and feedback. Yeah, um, I mean, so I honestly did pretty much. I don't. I didn't know anything about BattleBots coming into it. I've like watched the show with Johnny like twice, but I was like. Johnny, Johnny was like, oh, I can build you a robot so you can get in. And I was like, no, I'll build my own. So um, (laughs) building my robot, I really did not know what was too heavy, what is like, what is affordable, what is like reasonable. Because I knew, I heard a lot about how um, combat robot is a very expensive sport. So I was like, that probably makes sense for $145 for single brushless motor I was like yeah sounds good um but again just like asking asking questions um because honestly the um combat robotics community is probably one of the most helpful and kind communities I've ever been in it's just people are always there happy and ready to help um so yeah kind of what like Alicia was saying is just don't be scared to ask for help because um, honestly, I probably would have, if I did not ask for help, my CAD would have been like five pound, like brick that didn't move. So it's just help is the mo- asking for help is the most important thing. And just like watching videos, I watched like a lot of, 
um Seth Shaper's videos. Um, and I watch like Fox at Cat Fox at Catalong. I'm not sure who made that, but just videos and asking people. That's how I know everything I know, which is not much, but we, we all start that... somewhere. We all start somewhere. Um... And to add on to that, uh, what's the great thing is, um, like I said, never, there's, never be afraid to ask for help. And help, even at events, like if your robot is damaged and you're not entirely sure how to fix it, loads of loads of friendly builders will help you build. And there's some build, some builders out there who will absolutely help you with designing your robot and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. or where you can get materials or stuff like that. There's, if you're a bit shy about that, there's loads of like, how to's on YouTube or there's websites, there's like Bristol Bot Builders. They've got a whole like page with like, these are different weight classes. Here's what we recommend you get. And even though there's still a, there's some kind of stigma around them, kit bots are still a perfectly fine way to get your foot to start off. Kit, I know some is oh, it's a kit bot. It's just built. You just built, built. You know, it's already designed, and you can't. You're already win with it. You learn pretty much. A kit bot will absolutely teach you the basics and everything you need to know. Especially the main thing, which is which I see a lot trip of a lot of first time builders is the weight limit. Because a lot of times when you design your first, you you know you do your first and weight, beetle weight, hobby weight, whatever, and you take it to the event and like, oh, that's a kill, that's that's like, you know, you gotta take a ton of weight off that because it's really overweight. A kit bot, that's probably already got all the weight you need. Yeah. Or I was gonna say another, actually, this is a funny story. So I, my very first competition went with my transmitter, which I have actually never used, um, because it would not pair and I could not get it to pair. So um three different builders actually let me borrow their transmitter for my different fights <laughs> because they were all like in when I came back to be like, can I borrow your transmitter again? They were like, oh, actually like I'm going. <laughs> so I used three different kinds of transmitters with three different styles of drive my first competition, which was very funny. Um, again, thrown in on the deep end and I got to try out a bunch of stuff. Um, but really like it was a giant thank you to like all of the builders who let me just like borrow their transmitter while I was going in um because I was like super freaked out and like oh my gosh my transmitter doesn't pair and yeah it was just quite a bit of chaos but um a super cool kind of proof of how all the builders kind of come come around you and really help you you know get your bot in the ring um and get ready to fight yeah for sure and like you, you both actually touched on one of the questions, and I really want to get Tom's thoughts on this specifically because Tom, really all the bots that you've built have been a, a custom design. You know, you haven't built from kits. And I'm curious to get your thoughts of, you know, people starting out doing what you did versus doing a kit. Um, it will cause you much less trouble if you start with a kit. Um, I learned so many wrong ways to do things with my first bot. Um, like I shorted out like two or three ESCs learning how to solder and the, it's, it's nice having when you're done being like, oh yeah, I just custom designed this. But like mentioned before you get done and you realize that it weighs three and a half pounds and you have to make a trip to Walmart for a mini bot. Um, or, um, like pause was just like a, like a, an idea that I saw on the internet, um, on a different YouTube video. I was just like, I kind of did this. I'm like, I wonder if I could turn it into something combat related, but it's kits are, are great. The, the, uh, my wife purchased an SSP kit and she put it together all by herself um and it if it had been around when i first started that's where i would have started to and that's you know i like that one just because it doesn't have a spinner and for i wanted to give myself at least six months or so before i trusted myself with the spinner that's why like i would love to put a flamethrower on pause but i don't trust myself with it <laughs> Yes, I feel uh, like that, that could pause. be daunting. Flaming pause should come to like new bot Norwalk next time. I feel like that would be a great, that would be a great introduction. 
it may but it may not be me <laughs> okay okay <laughs> On the subject it's of spinners up. also, if your first robot is going to be a spinner or one of those kit spinners, for the love of God, make yourself a test box and do not post yourself testing your spinner that's not in a test box because yet one, you will be hounded on by all the builders for being incredibly <laughs> unsafe and you can also be blacklisted from events for unsafe practices. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because I mean, my first robot was a spinner and it was a kit bot, which was great to learn. Um, it was before there were instructions for the kit bot. So I just got the, most of the pieces, not all of them and kind of tried to put it together. Um, but yeah, my first spin up was at Norwalk, like in the test box. And I was like, I really hope this thing works. Fingers crossed, we'll see. But yeah, definitely would recommend figuring out how to get a test box or like make sure you're testing it safely or like keep it fully unplugged like if it needs to be your first test time like when you go to the competition and actually spin it up and be like okay is it gonna work is it not am i gonna throw a bot in there with no weapon <laughs> um yeah definitely make sure you're you testing can get it. most of the stuff you need for a test box at like a home you know like yeah. a, a hardware store or whatever just so some plywood and some polycarbon some hinges and a lock that's pretty much all you need yeah. It doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be like the battle box test box. It's just something. Just, just, and if you're gonna be something stupid, don't record insane. it and put something it on the internet. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll add on the subject of spinners that you know, I that my, I mean, mine's gonna be a, a drum spinner. Um, but at the same time, during the the design process, um, when speaking with Corey Nason, who's helping me with this. He was like, do you want practice discs for your weapon? And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> um, because, you know, you have to be able to test it safely. And even with the smaller robots, you know, do you have space to test something like that at home? Yes, but you still have to take the right precautions to make sure that you don't, you know, accidentally destroy something or take off a hand. You know, there's... <laughs> Listen, if you are like most people living in an apartment, you want to make sure you get your security deposit back. <laughs> so you want to make sure, you know, you test your stuff where it's not going to, you know, get the floors or get you or get anything else in your apartment. Mm -hmm. Also, with most, a lot of events follow the same sort of safety rules. When you're designing your robot, again, especially if it's spinner, read the safety rules because that trips up a lot of first time builders is that they enter, their robot can't fight because it breaks some say it doesn't pass the safety tests. It's usually the one the other thing that trips them up is just a locking bar or a fuse or a switch link, whatever. Just read most of the rules are there are for safety reasons. And if you don't pass the safety checks, they will not let you fight. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, now going on to another aspect that doesn't all, you know, depending on what type of, you know, build you're doing or, you know, what experience you have, not everybody has experience with these things, but um, specifically CAD and 3D printing, um, you know, the process of learning CAD, a lot of people were asking, like, what are good programs for CAD, um, you know, 3D printers, like, basically just tips and tricks in that arena. Um, Johan, have you gotten to work well you and I know you've worked with CAD some I don't know if you've gotten to do any 3D printing yet but I'm curious to hear like your experience and any like tips and tricks you can share from what you've done so far yeah so I mean CAD is definitely it's hard to learn and it's taken me a while to get to where I am but it's just I think it's all about just practicing and you don't don't start with a combat robot because they're very complex there's lots of things you have to take into account I mean I have like just tons of random stuff like try and think of something that you think you might be able to CAD and CAD it um and there's so many helpful resources um along the way I think like I use Onshape um which is I think a great software but there's a Foxic, Foxic catalog. Again, I don't remember who made it, but that was like, I think, search that up on YouTube. It is very helpful for people of um, like Fusion users and, um, and Onshape users. I think it's just like, you learn a lot about using like 
sorry, I'm using parameters like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this this thick, but then make it easy to go back and change it because many times I have all of my CAD based off of this one measurement and I change one thing and it just falls apart. So I think it's like, it's all about practice and hours using CAD and asking help for help with CAD. I mean, I, I started with a pretty big horizontal that would have like snapped in half and would have been six pounds. Um, and what really I think helped me the most was again the catalog and then the new bot builder bot building beginners forum on NHRL. They have kind of like um you can pose a question and there's lots of people who will be there to help and give you suggestions. And yeah, I think that's like that is what really helped me probably the most. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Um Alicia, I'm curious to hear your thoughts because I, you know, I know like with frustration being a kid, I don't know how much you've done with 3D printing, but I know you've, you've done some CAD stuff. So actually it's the opposite. I have not really done a ton of CAD. I am oh. not great at CAD. So I have, that's actually my new like learning. Cause I wanted to, I want to build the 12. So, um, and I've done like a little bit of you know, some different things with frustration, but nothing too crazy. Um, it has not been a lot, but I did dive into the 3D printing because I kept asking other people to print my parts. Um, and I actually would recommend the Bamboo Labs P1P, which is what I got. Um, it's on sale right now, um, but I started with an, end, an Ender and it did not go well. Um, so I ended up getting like a nicer one, which was um, a bit of an investment, but has worked out really well. I've been able to print a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I experimented. I can show you two of my favorite things I've printed. Um, I'll show you the, the new frustration has like these little, the little frustration like on the side. So I've experimented with like adding words and then a Another thing that I would recommend is if you're starting 3D printing, like printing some other stuff, not just robots. Um, so Thingverse has like lots of really cool stuff. So I printed this giant Oreo <laughs> and it like opens into a box, which is like my favorite thing I've ever done in my entire life. More than robots. I, actually, that's not true. I do like frustration better, but it is really cool. So yeah, like learning about the different types of material I bought probably more filament than I needed to just to like test a bunch of different stuff, but it's been really fun. Um, this is actually, um, instead of TPU, it's PLA plus like the bendable PLA, which is kind of interesting. So, um, yeah, I've just tried some interesting, interesting things. Um, I do have TPU prints of it as well, but, uh, yeah, I would, I would highly recommend getting into 3d printing. It will, start to consume your life because you're like oh my gosh I got to start another print and you'll just get really excited like if it there's a lot of places to learn and a lot of things you can learn with 3d printing um yeah it's quite a journey I mean same thing with CAD I assume I just haven't gotten very far on that journey but 3d printing is really fun I love it I now know I now want you to make a full body uh, Oreo spinner Oh my gosh. Okay. So it's because I work for the company that makes like Sour Patch Kids and Oreos. Yeah. Um, I do, I do want to, everybody at work keeps being like, when are you going to make an Oreo robot? I know there's an Oreo robot out there. Mm. Um, I think it's like double stuff or something like that, but I do want to make one. I feel like. Or, or it could, if, if since it's Sour Patch, it could be the Sour Patch bot. Awesome. I feel like that would be funny. I feel like, so I'm yeah. doing a gingerbread robot, which very easily could transform or into like Sour Patch Kid. I just want to do one where it's like all, all the colors of the Sour Patch Kid that's kind of like the bananas for scale, like not like the little Sour Patch Kids that are there. Like just put a little motor and like, ee. I feel like that would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Alex, it's, you, you, can, you can go ahead with, with your experience with that. Well, I, to be brutally honest, I actually don't have much experience when it comes to uh, CAD and uh, 3D printing because I well, I have been beginning to learn with CAD, but it is, as been pointed, it, it is a very, it is a difficult, it is a steep learning curve, sort of a, uh, a stuff. And 
again, very much with like sourcing parts and stuff like that. Don't be afraid to ask builders. They will absolutely give you a rundown. Um, and a good a good first program to learn CADing, I would probably actually say is Blender because that will help you learn modeling and shaping and stuff like that. Um, and you can also use blenders to, for 3D printing, like to 3D print. But so you can just, okay, let's do this shape in, in Blender, then send it to the 3D printer, and you'll see if it works or not. <laughs> but I honestly don't have that much experience. Like I said, it's with a lot of uh, just just ask. There's no point. There's no there's 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 no problem with just asking for help. There's absolutely no problem at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, now, Tom. I know you 3D print a lot. <laughs> yes, every every time I make a pause, it's like a week straight of the 3D printer just whirring. Um, we've finally moved it to the opposite side of the house so I can sleep. Um, but uh, like the first drink of the day, that was first designed with like graph paper and Tinkercad. Um, and like the parts were made from like cutting boards um, and just wood screwed together. Um, and then like motor and drive from the Bristol Bot Builders. And we went from there. And then when I wanted to make, um, when I wanted to start ordering parts from Send Cut Send, I was just like, well, I probably should actually learn how to CAD a little bit and just goofed around with it for a weekend. Um, and then did very rough shapes. My first CADs look so bad um, in Fusion 360. And they had the free hobby license. And the I got just basic shapes so I could send them to Send Cut Send. The nice thing is on YouTube, you can pretty much search any problem that you have. And somebody has a three minute video that explains exactly what you're trying to do. Um, and then for um, Pause was my first from scratch CAD. Um, I think it was um, uh, Matt Lantry in the Discord who gave me suggestions on a 3D printer. So I picked one up on Black Friday. Um, and then that just started printing like crazy and st starting with PLA just to like um, get rough shapes and see, will this actually work? And then just upgrading from there, just filament by filament um, just recently got a direct drive um, upgrade from my CR10, which is so much nicer. Um, but yeah, the night, yeah, CAD is great and frustrating at the same time because yeah, you'll change one little thing and everything screws up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, or you'll just be like, I'm just trying to change the size. Why is it going in reverse now? And, and it's just, sometimes I just turn off the monitor and say, taking a break for a little while. <laughs> um, but I mean, I do print, like a pause takes about a week to print. Um, the Revenge of Mouse Mouse that I did was I think 40 hours, um, just straight printing of, um, TPU and we're looking at possibly scaling it up to a 12 and that's going to be I think 120 hours of printing mm -hmm. but it's yeah learning CAD and 3D 3D printer is probably one of the best things that you can purchase if you want to custom design your own bots if even for prototyping just like we were talking about like the uh it was like a test weapon blade um, the one for Revenge of Mouse Mouse, I just printed a, just a perfect circle with the bolt pattern out of TPU and just had that on the bottom just to spin to make sure it even fit, just a fit test. Yeah. Yeah. I think also just one more thing I'd like to add uh, is don't be scared to restart. It's like it hurts to kind of just throw away your CAD. Like I've done it three times now it's like you once you go in the wrong wrong direction it's not much you can do and it really hurts to just close that tab and then open a completely new one but every single time you do it your bot gets better exponentially it's um 
I mean, just going back through my different documents of the same robot, it like they look the same, but each time, like they look similar, but each time it gets better and more in weight and more like better, um, more durable, just all that. It's I think it it's it's a struggle and I've like I've really didn't want to do it. I've had Johnny like just restart. Um and it's like it hurts, but I mean every like every time you do it, you get better at catting and your robot gets better. So it's like you're able to whip up a chassis in a week and then you get back to the level you were, um the stage of the bot. I yeah, I think that's what also like that's helped me quite a bit. Just closing your CAD if it's like not going right, if your dimensions are like wrong, if you're um if it's too heavy, if I don't know, electronics aren't gonna fit. It's just big big stuff that can't really be adjusted with few like little tweaks. Just restart completely. Yeah, and that actually leads into my next question. Um, but real quick, I did want to add because this kind of um, went into Alex's point about asking for help. Um, and also, like Tom, you mentioned send, cut, send. Depending on what kind of bot you're building, there are so many great places to, you know, get things. Like send, cut, send is amazing. I mean, there's a reason why they sponsor like all of the BattleBots teams, um, and also um, Team Malice does a lot of of custom work and things like that, that you can order things from. So there's a lot of resources, depending on what you're looking for. Um, there, there's definitely a lot out there. Um, but yeah, Johan, you were touching on the question that uh, someone had asked about the mindset for like dealing with disappointments and setback, because we all have that happen. Um, I mean, I haven't even got started building yet, but I can tell you that just from my journey doing this show, that in the beginning, it was not like it is now. Um, it was not a situation where I have three episodes a week. I probably went an entire month without getting an interview. And there was a point where I was like, I don't know if this is actually going to go well. And, you know, I, I questioned myself. I'm really glad that I didn't. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, I think it's something that happens with all builders. So, um, you know, Alicia, if you want to talk about that, like not just any setbacks with building, but also like losing matches and how you, you know, recover from that. Yeah. So it's funny because before I named frustration, I had done battle bots. So I, 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 everybody knows why I named frustration frustration at this point because I knew robots were going to be frustrating and I really wanted to pick something that I could laugh at to help like make my mood better when I was having a really hard time at a competition or like my third motor had yeeted itself or like 30 SC like I just like destroyed a lot of things in my very early like first competition um but yeah I feel like the best thing is to like find something like that and like really hold on to it and say like, it's not about winning or losing. I know people get caught up in being like, okay, I want to be like, you know, this, the best robot builder in New York city. Like that's probably not going to happen your first time. Um, honestly, if you take the mindset of like, I really love, I love fighting. I love the community. I love like learning. Um, you'll be a lot happier than if you take the mindset of like, I must win at all costs. Um, Cause you know that like, that puts so much pressure on yourself. Um, my last Norwalk, like you'll make stupid mistakes. Like my last Norwalk, um, I had gotten my switch like hit and I decided not to replace it dumb choice. And it ended up costing me like two matches where my robot decided to like turn off because the switch was having issues <laughs> um because I had damaged the like screw like it was really bad and then I like pulled it out and I was like oh great like had I my matches would have gone way different like had I actually switched it out um and you just have to kind of take that as a learning and be like okay well next time I, you know, get a damaged switch. I won't decide to run it again for two matches and then lose those two matches. Next time I'll like actually change it out. Um, and you just like have, I don't know, things like that, that you could really beat yourself up about for so long. Um, or like I've lost matches in like 
three seconds, which is where my switch got damaged. I got hit right in the switch in the first like six seconds of the fight. And then I was counted out. So it was like a 16 second match. Um, and you just have to take those as learnings and be like, okay, maybe I won't put my switch at the back of my drive. Maybe I'll like move my switch around a little bit or like give it some more padding or try to do something different. So yeah, you just have to take, I don't know, everything is like a learning opportunity. And just honestly, it's <laughs> Alex Pezza also says this all the time um, on Twitter. He's like, I'm just happy to be here. And that's kind of like what you really have to take like for combat robotics. You have to be like, I'm just happy to be here. There's so many great people. There's so many great bots. There are so many fun like knockouts and like you know, bots catching on fire and like all this craziness that you get to watch. Um, and it's, it's just really fun to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, Alex. Well, someone has said the most frustrating part when it comes to making robot is obviously for any, for any stage that you're doing it, where it's the CADs, the manufacturing, the electronics, just even testing and it's not working and you're getting really, really frustrated. Like why, why won't you work? You worked yesterday fine, but you're not working today for some reason. It's always best to just go put everything down and go have a five minutes or an hour or whatever. Go have a walk, go watch videos you like on YouTube, whatever, because the more frustrated you'll get, the more likely you are to make a mistake. And uh, it could be an even more costly mistake, like you blow an ECU or something like that. And also... It's sort of a weird thing, but sometimes the best times to break down are when you're at a robot event because you're surrounded by everyone else who know, also knows what they're doing. You're not just by yourself, just like, this worked, now it doesn't, why? And, yeah. Um, but when it comes to, the, like I say, with the winning and losing fight, Pag, yeah, there are, you, no matter what event you go to, you're always going to have one of those people who are, I am here to win, no fun, all that sort of stuff. And that's not the right attitude to have because you won't you won't be popular if you're a, no one really likes a good a bad uh, sore loser and no one likes a bad winner sort of thing like I know on battle bots and sometimes on Norwalk on the live stream is you have people screaming down into the camera when they're winning or whatever like that that at most normal like most normal events people aren't like that you won't be you won't get many you won't make many friends doing that way mostly it's just a group of friends and hobby here to just have some fun with their robots you know and again, if the frustrating part, it because if a robot is dead, again, this happens on sometimes happens on battle bots. Really, don't do this at live events because no one will like you. If a if your opponent is dead, leave them alone. Leave them alone. This is not battle. This is not a TV show. If your, your robot's dead, leave them alone. Because Are you if sure that happens crashed, on battle bots? If your robot's trash, yeah, this, this, I'm not bringing up anyone in particular. Don't worry. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it's just, just you know, because it'll be the time will come when your robot is trashed and no one will want to help you because that don't help that you know. Why would I want to help that, them? They're they're assholes. Don't you know? Don't get a reputation. Don't get a bad reputation. It's the worst thing you can have in a robot combat event because no one wants to help you then. Yep. And the the help and like being a part of that community is is really important. Um, now, Tom, I'm curious to, to hear your take. You know, I, I mean, I think like personally, I think pause existing is a win. <laughs> um, but that's me. That, that it works most of the time is just a win. Um, because it's such a goofy design. Um, like when I had my fight against Alicia, she she hit it and I found that, hey, maybe this three mil carbon fiber can actually take a hit. Um, and, but yeah, like I had, I actually won a fight with Evil Twin. I went to the last event expecting to go 0-2, but just to having a good time. Because you get to show up and you get to spend a weekend hanging out with robot nerd friends and then, you know, having a few adult beverages and just being around a bunch of like minded people. But when I actually went to fight, there was no like yelling or screaming. It was just like, whoa, it actually 
did kind of a thing like it was supposed to do. And I mean, that's pretty much what I go there for. I just, I build something goofy. And if I actually happen to win, then that's a plus. Yes. Um, and, and really, I think like you touch on something important that it really depends on your expectations. Um, you know, I to, to kind of just share my own experience, because I don't have much at this point, but at the one event that, you know, that I competed in, um, you know, for me, my expectation was that I wouldn't win any matches. And when that expectation changed, and I won like four or five, um, then it was, it, it actually, it made that loss harder because you get used to winning and you're like, you want to keep going. And then when that doesn't happen, you're like, oh no, like what went wrong in this one that was different than like the other four or five. Um, but I mean, to be honest, by that point, I was like, you know, I'm really just happy to sit down and get to eat something and to have a drink and not have to worry about when my next match is. So again, it's all like goals and expectations to some extent. That was my first event. Of being out of the best victory. Yes. <laughs> I feel like it's actually really nice though, because I like, I've always gone out on like really annoying, like, you know, weird failures, but it's really nice because you just get to like hang out with your friends then there's not like the pressure of having to like you know go back to back to back to back to fight for this like you know final spot and sometimes it's nice to just like fix your robot up while you're there and you have everything and then you come back with like a fully functioning robot that you can just like set there and like work on another one <laughs> for the next competition like sometimes that's really nice too or sometimes it's nice like I'll toss different discs on it and like spin it up in the test box and be like, how long will this battery last? Like just different things like that, that you don't normally get to do. Um, or be like, okay, come look at this. Like, do you think that this makes sense? Um, or what about like, if I change this, it's, it's just a really fun thing. Like once you get out, you just get to like hang out with everybody. And then you also get to cheer on the rest of your teammates if they're still in, um, or, you know, you just get to like, meet new people and yeah hang out also you get a lot of stickers even in the small events you just get come up with like a whole scrapbook of stickers it's... yes the stickers it's, it's... are fantastic yeah. <laughs> they're an added it's always, bonus it's, 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 it's always fascinating when you go to like because even like when you first event like if you if you got into robot combat through battle bots or norwalk or robot wars whatever and you go to your if you go to an event thinking oh it's going to be like that you're going to be in a bit of a shock because most of the guys are just chill like oh hi yeah oh we get you know go you know congratulations you made me or whatever like there's no there's no real drama or whatever the hell the battle boss likes to push or anything like that there's nothing like that uh, just yeah it's basically is just a group of mates who have all share the same hobby and we're here to enjoy our hobby yeah just <clears throat> if and yeah, don't don't go in and go. I mean, yes, it's nice to win, but don't go in saying I'm going to blitz the competition. It's going to be amazing and all that sort of stuff. Is just my main goal every event I go is as long as I put on a good fight, I'm happy. Win or lose. Yeah, and I would recommend especially if if anybody's going to Norwalk for their first one. Norwalk has like crazy robots. Like even if you won other competitions or like. Like my brother, the very first competition I went was to go watch him do his very first Norwalk and he had won quite a lot of events and then got knocked out very early in Norwalk, um, which is, you know, like a bit of a dent to your pride, but that's how, that's how Norwalk goes. Cause it's, it's such a crazy, like almost like different, like it's the same, but it is like slightly different. Cause there's so many really talented builders not that there's not talented builders other where other places but it's just the sheer amount of robots that you have you just get placed against some really good ones sometimes and it's just like it's really hard to go up against like you know like a voxel v1 for your first fight of the day you're like that's great i love that it can happen you <laughs> can get <laughs> i'm gonna get you can get the fight. awful you can get the awful oh your first fight is the current champion. Oh, it's, yeah. it's always it can always happen. 
it, like someone's got to fight the champion round one. And sometimes that's going to be you. Um, yeah. And also a good piece of advice, especially for Norwalk or a two day event or whatever, get a good night's sleep, get a good night's sleep the day before. It is and make sure your, your robots fucked up. Yeah. Because you do not want to be, as I'm sure some of us have attributed, it's 3 a.m., the event starts in six hours, and you're still hunched over the robot trying to get it to work. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. I've soldered in an, uh, a hotel room before. Yeah. <laughs> Night before, I was like, turn on the bathroom shower. I'm like, eh, hopefully I don't set off the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've spent a... I booked my hotel and then only spent about five hours in it, which makes it one of the most expensive hotels I've ever been to just because I was there for five hours. So on a time per money basis. Yeah. It, yeah. But yeah, just, yeah, just get a good night's sleep because you will not get a lot of chance for having that. There's, there are no napping in robot combat. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think the last thing that I want to touch on, um, I mean, we kind of have to some extent, but I mean, I think it's one of the most important things in getting started in building, because I know I wouldn't be doing this without that, is the importance of, you know, really getting into the community and getting to know builders and getting to know members of the community and learning from them, um, you know, because unless you have an engineering background, you don't know all of those things off the top of your head, um, you know? So I'll go to, to Johan first. I mean, I know like Johnny kind of got you into this, you know, how like, how vital was that to have somebody like him who, I mean, he's just an amazing builder, um, you know, kind of showing you the ropes and all the, really all the guys on Team Stam. Yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't be here without like Johnny and Team Stam and all. It's just, like I, when I'm catting, I just pepper him in the chats because like <laughs> he's the person I talk to a lot and he knows quite a bit. Um, so like there's so many things that are very like minute and like, you know, your blade may look good and you think it looks great and it's symmetrical. Things like, oh, grinding edge which is something I learned on the um the bot builders beginner channel on, on HRL it's like you want to have the point of your blade be the furthest out um and your blades aren't 0 0.4 um, pounds like I thought they were um it's just like yeah I mean it's really not it is easy it's like I don't know, you don't need a PhD in rocket science, but it's not something you can kind of just do, watch three YouTube videos, sit down and cat a heavyweight. It's, there's definitely a lot of work and you do not know everything. Like I, there's so many things that I thought like blades were, there's just, I'm not gonna get into all of it, like half an inch thick just so many things um, that like everybody was can help you with and is like, they are happy to help you with it. Um, yeah, it's just, I think the most important thing when it comes to building robots is not being scared to ask for help um, because it's not, it's, like it's not the most niche, but it's a relatively niche sport. So there is, you can, you're not gonna find 200 videos on everything. You might find three that kind of address your question, but there's hundreds and hundreds of builders everywhere that want to help, willing to help just, yeah. And I think Team Stamina and Johnny in particular have, really helped me and I don't know if I would have been able to make it to September with a robot at all maybe like a chunk of square PLA box or something I might have showed up with um it's just it's the most like very vital when it comes to building a robot is asking for help yeah <laughs> don't be scared at all I was definitely very scared I thought I would get like shunned because I had a 
giant robot that would not drive like it's there there have been worse there probably have been worse i'd like to think that i don't know but there probably someone's cad files somewhere 20 year old cad but it's definitely Fine. not yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've i've some pretty bad ones too but it's just and then also hours on cad i mean i spent too much time on cad um my grades will show but it's like just spending the time put on some music um listen to a podcast it's just it's experience and once you get to the point where you're like i want to have a curve this big and you could do it then like then robot building becomes a whole lot more i mean catting catting becomes a whole lot more fun and addictive almost yeah um alicia yeah um i don't know i mean definitely asking for help i asked for so much help um when i was starting <laughs> i feel like it's not, the amount of times i called like peter on facetime and i was like my brother what is happening <laughs> like it was a lot um especially as i was assembling the first kit because there weren't there weren't instructions um he had not gotten to that point yet <laughs> and he was like do you want me to bring a fully assembled one like i'll do it all for you and i was like no let me do it um it was a little bit it was a little bit of a regret decision because it would have been way easier but um i think i learned so much like having to call him <laughs> through or four times a day as I was like soldering stuff and I was like okay this gets connected to this right um but yeah that and like the community is so good I mean honestly it's funny because everybody says there's no such thing as stupid questions but a lot of my questions feel stupid when I'm asking them um and I feel like that's how it goes you always you know can get really self-conscious about being like okay um so what kind of what kind of power tool do I need to like do this or like what is the difference between like a wood screw in one that doesn't screw into wood like what is the difference or like what are like the differences between the little star little hex guys I don't even know the right names and like the little hex things or like I don't even know what to call them I was just like the star one the with the squares and then there's the square one and then there's like the triangle one and then you just have every shape um but I feel like I don't know as long as you can laugh at yourself like nobody else thinks your questions are stupid because they've all been there and they may or may not have asked your questions so honestly yeah just like whatever whatever questions you have ask in like the Norwalk chat ask in like the shredding zoo or ask in like your discord or any of the other like really great discords that are there as resources for builders and then yeah like I mean, honestly, I've never like sent people like DMs, but people like send like questions to like Peter all the time. And they're like, I bought your motor. How does it work? Or like, I bought this, like, how does it go together? <laughs> and like, that's totally fair too. There's so many resources out there. Um, it just takes, it takes work on your side. Like, like, um, like Johan said, it's not going to happen after watching two YouTube videos. I would love to like you know, sleep on a book of robot parts and be like, oh, osmosis. Like I know how to <laughs> build a robot, but that's not how it works. <laughs> I did try that in college. It did not work. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you, you just really have to be able to go out there and ask the dumb questions and then be okay. Like learning a little bit at a time. Like I, I can pinpoint at different competitions, like one thing I've learned that like changed the way I like did my robot stuff or like changed the way I like you know, set my station up or change the way I like soldered. Like I learned a bunch of different tips and tricks along the way. And you just kind of have to keep taking things. I have a, like a little notebook where I write them all down. Um, but yeah, just be like a little bit of a sponge and ask dumb questions. That's my, <laughs> that's my long-winded answer. <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely. Um, Alex. I mean, yeah, it's, it's better to ask a dumb question than make a dumb mistake uh it's and yeah like i said probably asking questions i'm um, other things that are quite helpful and 
a good toolbox is good helpful because it's probably a bane of a lot of builders of you just you know of just disappearing tools where we're at a vent or at home where you just put your tool down and it's just disappeared off the face of the earth um yeah just it just happened that just happens a lot <laughs> i don't know well, to me anyway uh but uh so yeah just have a good tool uh just have a good toolbox and always as you say like asking help there's there's never any problem with that and it's just yeah like i said even if you need like oh i don't have a i you know i don't my, i live in an apartment and i don't have access to a welder or something like that there's lots of people who will happily take on like little small jobs for you and stuff like that will do things where you're like i need to send this off to be welded or hey uh you know help. there's even some people who are absolutely fine caddying for you uh you can ask i mean they, they will charge you commission but they know what they're, they know what they're doing usually and they will probably set they're probably also in contact with some with some like uh, companies that could get these parts made for you so yeah yeah absolutely um and tom um yeah don't be afraid to ask lots of stupid questions i i have no idea how many messages i've sent robert rund on discord just asking him dumb questions and he's always very very nice with his answers or he'll be like why would you want to do that i'm like why not we'll see what happens but like one of the best things that happened for me like at my first event was i was at the i accidentally just picked a table and it was the, sh the shredded table and I was right next to Angel and Alex. And that experience could have been so much more worse if those two weren't there. And then like I had a few rough events too. And um, like um, Ashley and Tamara from Milk Tank um, or Lindsay from, um, you know, she just, those people right there were just kind of lean on them. It's in the, like those, folks just made the events go so much better um even when you're just frustrated at an event and you can i used to like throw first drink up on a shelf and be like i'm not looking at you for a month just you're you're on the shelf of shame and you know just don't be afraid to take a break and if you're frustrated just be like take a break um do something else um get engrossed in a video game for a month it's um and just don't yeah don't be afraid to reach out the i mean i'm i like to refer to myself as a bit of an enthusiastic idiot when it comes to this like i don't know like a lot of the stuff about it i just have a lot of like weird silly ideas and i'm just i'll ask the people the questions um like how does this work what what is brushless and why does it brushless and <laughs> and people will answer those questions know the answer to. <laughs> nobody I knows still it just is. <laughs> yeah. but yeah the community is what keeps me coming back like mm -hmm. just being able to hang out with friends for for a weekend and just asking dumb questions um and when people ask you dumb questions, if you know the answer, helping them just, you know, showing the same kind of compassion that people showed you for other new builders, you know, and just trying to set a good example as well. Um, you know, some of the nicest things that I've heard was like somebody saying, oh, yeah, I saw positively and now I wanted to build and I built a robot and this is my first event. And I'm like, that is awesome. I'm like just keep doing it. It's, you know, if you ever have questions, reach out to anybody. I've sent so many people the link to the NHRL Discord um, because I know they can get help there, but it's, it's a great community. It's inclusive. There's, and there's a spot for everybody. Um, if you want to build silly robots, or if you want to build hyper competitive robots, there's, there's a spot for everybody. So always good to get a second opinion. I've always found like even if even if you know the quest, you know if you think you know the answer to the question you're gonna ask, or you've got like a design idea that like, you're gonna show someone else you can. You like it's always good to like just hey, what do you think of this? Or I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Sort of thing. It's not 
it's always good to get a second opinion. Also, um, yeah, and another also good tip I would say is if you are about to test your robot and you've got everything wired up and you're just about to put the switch in or the link in, whatever, always double check your wiring because I, I, sometimes you might have been in a rush to put things back together and you put positive into negative or whatever. Just double check before you put any power through it so you can, you know, just, just so you're not going to end up blowing up your ECU or your motor or whatever. Well, remember the carbon fiber is can. Remember the yeah. carbon fiber is conductive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make sure there's no exposed way. wiring touching metal or anything like that. <laughs> yes. I learned that in my first competition. There was a screw bit that got into my robot, and then I like took it out. I replaced the ESC, but I didn't tape over the solder on the ESC, and I have carbon fiber. Uh, so I shorted my second ESC. Um, so yes, remember it is conductive. <laughs> Always make sure to tape stuff. And uh, yeah, there's like little tips like that that you'll pick up, like where you like tape or where you like make sure, you know, you tape your your like battery thing so it doesn't like pull out during the middle of a match, like things like that. Um, I a fresh, feel like, yeah. A fresh, well, this, well, this, is, this has happened for me for experience, but every time we go to a new event, always put fresh batteries in your controller. Because it's happened to me where I've, I've had the robot, it's linked, it's powered up, it's driven to its starting position, then your controller dies because it's ran out yeah. of juice. And you just sat there with a dead, you're like, yeah, just always just put a fresh set of batteries in your controller. Always make sure you bring extra batteries and always just make sure you have like extra, you know, the couple things that you're going to need. Like, don't bring one battery for your robot either. Like, make sure you have a couple. Mm -hmm. um, just like plan for like a couple of the dumb failures. And then when the dumb failure happens, you can be like, okay, I got a solution. Like I have another battery that's charged. Great. <laughs> Yay. Let's switch it out. Exactly. Um, awesome. Well, it, it seems for Johan, his power went out. Um, yes. but oh, no. we're, we're, we're okay. Um, yeah, it's, you know, just, uh, just wrapping things up anyways, but I, I, I really think, you know, there, there was a lot of good advice for those who are looking to get into building, you know, have fun, get into the community, don't put too much pressure on yourself and, you know, learn from every experience because it's so important. So, um, I appreciate everyone from coming on and, joining me and talking about this um, because I think it's really critical for growing the sport and getting new folks in and, and whatnot. Um, but thank you all for those who are watching. Um, please make sure that you support combat robotics. Um, take these tips if you're looking at building um, because I think that they're really great. Uh, make sure that you, you know, like, subscribe, follow, comment, all of that good stuff um, and keep watching for more of these panels in the future. We will see everyone next time on the show. And there's more. Um, so Jonathan from Jupiter Robotics is here with me um, because I did a not smart thing and gave him the wrong date for the panel. So I wanted to make sure that I had him on the show um, just to share his thoughts, you know, as somebody who's getting into building and things like that. So um, welcome to the show, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Yes, you've got the floor all to yourself, so you <laughs> you have a little bit of an advantage. But you know, for folks who aren't familiar with you or Jupiter Robotics, um, kind of tell everybody who you are and a little bit about what you're working on. Yeah, so we're just a small robot team in Florida. We're just getting started. We haven't like competed yet, but we did just reveal our robot over on our YouTube channel, and I've actually got it with me. I'll show it in a minute, but. Yeah, we're just here to have fun. That's that's the name of the game. <laughs> if you can't tell by the name of the team, we're just here to have fun. <laughs> yeah, it, fun is important. Um, yes. I think if you take it too seriously, then it can be a really stressful thing when it doesn't really need right. to be. You need to have a fair mix of both. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so... 
first, I, I just want you to kind of talk about like that process of building that robot and, you know, what you found useful or helpful or like how you dealt with any setbacks that you had doing that because it's you know i, I think it's a challenge for anybody when they start oh, out yeah. doing this oh yeah it, it's not the easiest thing in the world it's, it's the most fun thing in the world it's not the easiest thing but i've got it here with me it's the finger tech viper kit take the whip and take the off and we've got a vertical spinner configuration for this one. And yeah, it's been giving us some problems. It's fun to drive around when it works, though. Like yes. we've been like replacing certain things like the batteries and stuff. And it's been fun learning this. Like I've learned a lot since whenever we got this and learning a lot about this and i understand now what the battle boss team go through sometimes with they have to drop out i hear it occasionally like a glitch last season they had to withdraw from the tournament i get it now i totally get why because it doesn't always work the way you want it to but it's just a learning process you you know and it's really fun it's really fun to learn. And I can't wait to compete. This yeah. is going to be so much fun. Absolutely. Um, this thing are just looks any, really cool. Are there any certain competitions that you're planning on going to with it? Yeah, so there's a really big event down here called Maker Fair Orlando. Yeah, that's a big one. It's a Saturday and Sunday in November every year, which actually they announced all the way back in March this year. That's a bit early. They announced it's going to be November 4th and the 5th this year. So we're really hoping to get into that one. Because that, that one's always a lot of fun. You get to meet, like, typically between 20, 30 teams from BattleBots. And we go to so many events here. Those teams actually remember me. And yeah, Witch Doctor, I've seen them post on Facebook before. They say that this is their favorite weekend of the year every year yeah they're there all, all the time and last year there weren't as many teams because it was like right after filming the show like probably a week or two if that but yeah it's really fun you get to meet all, all the famous teams and you get to watch them fight you get to see their bots on display you get to see the up and coming teams like it's really fun to to learn from them. Yeah, yeah, we're just we're really excited. We've got some other ones we're looking at. We just really want to go to any event we can, any local event. So they're they're always fun. Yeah, absolutely. You got to go to events. That's how you yeah. meet people and how you learn. Right. Yeah, there's another event that we started a new tradition last year. Every October, there's an event in a, a mall in Tampa. They literally, they, they call it mall fights. They set up an arena in the middle of the mall. And then the, the pits are around the corner somewhere. Yeah, that was the first event we went to as a team. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. And we want to fight at that one too. They actually, the event organizers held an event a couple months ago where we brought this. We showed it to some of the teams competing. They really loved it. We did not compete, however, because we're still fighting technical difficulties with this thing. It's driving me crazy sometimes. But... Even though we did not compete, I was a judge. So I had a lot of fun with that. Really yeah. got a lunch break, but that was fun. <laughs> that can be fun as well. Um, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm curious, you know, when you decided to build, what was, you know, the decision between going with a 
fiber kit versus just, you know, building from scratch is that, and it, you know, I, I definitely understand why people would go that route because I almost did. Um, but I'm just curious to hear for you why you chose to do that. Long story short, we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we, for most of us, we, we don't really know any, anything about the components in a battle bot. So it's really good. I recommend this kit for beginners. I hear it all the time that they recommend getting this kit without a weapon at first. And then eventually you get used to the driving and then you can get like the lifter. That's what people recommend. Uh, we want the spinner instead. <laughs> so it has, it's really fun. I recommend this kit weapon or no weapon it's really cool it's a great one to learn from and like learn the different components and like the variety of components like like the battery different varieties from a single brand like i didn't know there were so many it's not just batteries it's all of it and i've heard that there's different armor materials and I've been hearing a lot of names recently. And anytime somebody mentions it, like on Battle Boss, you, you hear AR-500 or AR-550, I heard once on the show. I recognize that. I don't know what the difference is. So still studying that. But I forgot what this is called that we have on our bot. It's whatever comes with a Viper kit. But there are different materials that Fingertech sells. They have like titanium, aluminum. So we're thinking about getting like different armor material. Because I was told by a friend at this event a couple months ago that this particular material, I think it's like polycarbonate, I think, it, it, it just shatters. You take one good hit, it, it's not the best armor. But that's like if you fight a a spinner that can like slice right through, like that'll do a lot of damage for this. So I'm trying to figure out which armor would be best. Still new to this, but uh, yeah. So we're having a lot of fun just learning from it, what's best for it, and eventually. Someday soon, we'll, we'll be building from scratch. Like, we've got some design concepts we're thinking about. So, good place to start. I recommend this for anybody. Viper Kit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is no wrong way to start building, and you have to start somewhere, and, right. you know, you end up learning a lot. So, right. I think that that's great. Um, you know, yeah. and I think this is a good example of, like, somebody just saying, hey, I'm going to do it and then coming up with something and then you can just learn from it and build off yeah. of it in the future. Well, if you think about it, Jameson Ghost started somewhere, right? He yep. probably started with a, a kid or, or I don't know, it is Jameson. I don't know. He probably didn't start with a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that Sawblaze isn't his only bot. I'll put it that way. He's got some other ones to learn from. So there's a good example there. But you got to start somewhere, like you said. Yep, 100%. Um, well, I, I hope, you know, in general that any fans, especially those who are looking to build, learn a lot from this episode, um, because I think that there's just been a lot of good insight overall and a lot of different paths that people have taken to start building. Um, but, you know, um, for, for anybody that's watching, just keep watching the show and we're going to have more of these amazing panels and lots more um, information to come. So thank you, Jonathan. Thanks for having me.